recipient and our own volunteer and city employee, Mr. Bill Matson, who are going to update council on the uh, Partners for Life program. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Nice to have you. Mayor Salsi and honorable council members, I'm here to thank the city of Niagara Falls for becoming a Partners for Life with Canadian Blood Services in 2008. <clears throat> This partnership speaks volumes to the community of Niagara Falls as Canadian Blood Services relies on the support of individual donors and partners for life groups to ensure that there's enough blood for local patients in need year round. Through the Partners for Life program, city employees commit to donating a set number of blood units each calendar year. To date, there are 25 city employees registered as Partner for Life members and they've donated a total of 144 units. Well, if you, I'm not sure if you're aware, but each unit of blood can actually help save or extend up to three lives. So that 144 donations equals 432 patients that are being helped. Their lives are either being saved or extended. Canadian Blood Services would like to continue to encourage the city employees, their families and friends who have considered be becoming blood donors to get started. The City of Niagara Falls holds 24 blood donor clinics annually, and there are many more across the region. You have a champion on staff, Bill Matson, who can assist you with your Partners for Life number, as well as offer suggestions on how you can further engage staff to donate. Employees can call 188-TO-DONATE, or they can go to our website at www.bloodca.ca to find out more information about donating or to book an appointment. Canadian Blood Service is very proud to be linked with such a committed and valuable partner and we thank you for your continued support. At this time I would like to invite Chantelle Chason to um, come forward. Chantelle is a blood recipient as well as a volunteer for Canadian Blood Services and she's here to share her story with you this evening. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you Janet. Thank you for having me today here Council. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody for having me and uh, let you know that I've been a lifelong resident of Niagara. I've currently moved uh, to Stony Creek, but um, I still like coming and speaking on behalf of Canadian Blood Services and sharing my story. Um, in 2005, I was 22 years old and I was faced with a very serious illness, which is also a very rare illness. Um, it's called thrombotic thrombocytopedic purpura, and it's one of those one in a million diseases. Um, at that time, I knew little about um, blood donations or blood product recipients, but I quickly became one. Um, blood therapy is the only um, known therapy for my disease and I received in just two months over 40 blood transfusions. So when we're talking in units of blood, that's a large, large amount of blood. Um, I was receiving daily transfusions through plasmapheresis, which is another program that Canadian Blood Services uh, deals with. Um, primarily with whole blood donation though, um, I now speak on behalf of Canadian Blood Services throughout the region as well as Niagara Halt and Hamilton. Um, just raising awareness about the need for blood because it is always there and blood is in us to give. Um, the Partners for Light program is great because as a blood donor recipient, I can never donate. So what I do is I go and I speak on behalf of Canadian Blood Services, raising awareness, getting people more involved because it is a great thing to be able to put a face to uh, the cause that you're helping and that's me. So um, we have a couple events here in Niagara um, as well as in Halton and Hamilton where we promote uh, the Partners for Life program which I know you guys are all aware of now. So all I can do is encourage you to donate because you know it does save up to three lives in my case. I needed a lot more product um, and the need will always be there for me if I am to get sick again or I need surgery. So um, thank you all if you have donated in the past and if, if you can get out and become a part of our program, that'd be really great because you are saving lives um, every day. So uh, thank you so much for having me here today and uh, hopefully become a regular donor and I'll see you at other events. Thank Thanks. you, Chantel. <clears throat> Bill? Uh, thank you, Janet and Chantel. Uh, it's appreciated that you could share your story with us. I just wanted to speak for a few minutes on the role of uh, the city staff as far as uh, blood donations. The Partners for Life program was introduced, as Janet said, uh, a few years ago, and we have been very successful in every year that we've been involved in the program. We have uh, not only raised our goal, but also met and exceeded our goal. We've got a few staff even just sitting around the room here that uh, are involved. I know that Mr. Arafita, Mr. Todd, Mr. Holman, uh, Mr. Hurlovich are all uh, regular donors and help contribute uh, towards the campaign. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're just trying to encourage those blood donors within the municipality within, uh, that work for the corporation um, to continue to donate blood. 
Uh, you can donate up to six times a year for most people when you're donating cold blood. And we just want to provide an opportunity for any of those who may even be thinking of donating blood uh, to perhaps go along with a co-worker, stop and ask questions. Uh, I, I, you may have heard me say this before, but uh, when I had a few guys from my ball team come out, one of the gentlemen on the ball team said if I'd known it was going to be that easy, I would have started a long time ago. So a very uh, simple statement, but I think a statement that uh, holds a lot of weight. Um, just to, to point out, locally we do have clinics Saturday, April the 17th, and that's from 9 until 1 at St. Andrew's Church, and again on Monday, April 26th from 1 until 8 at Optimus Club. So I just want to encourage those uh, within the municipality that are working for the city to continue to donate. If there's anyone out there that's thinking of donating, by all means just contact me and I can pass on some more information. But uh, as Chantel's even pointed out, um, it's, you don't need uh, a story like hers to go out and give you cause to, to donate. Uh, you may just you know, <coughs> recognize the need and go and donate on your own. And Bill, do you want to share with the council and those present how many contributions you've made or donations you've made? Um, I'm currently at uh, 62 donations. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, and again, there's there's no reason for my donating. I think I just I seen my father donate. Uh, his father was a, a donator. Um, they're, they're, luckily, we've been fortunate and not been touched uh, in our family for someone that uh, has been in the need for blood. But at the same time, I think our, our family over the generations have recognized the need in the community and uh, just taken that one hour once a month to roll up your sleeve and, and donate blood. Well, thank you very much for your presentation and your comments this evening. Members of Council, any questions uh, further? Okay. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. Member of the Council, our next deputation is from Wellspring Hope uh, Fund. Uh, this evening we have the Executive Director of Wellspring Niagara, Ms. San Mantini, along with Liz Palmieri from the Niagara Community Foundation, and our very own Alex Hurlovich, who's going to make a brief presentation uh, to Council and uh, show a brief video. So we'll call for the video first. Is that right, Alex? Uh, uh, or are we going to do it? Uh, sure, let's, let's see the video. If the yeah. <laughs> to Wellspring Niagara, a regional cancer support center for those living with cancer, both the patient, the family member, close supporter, friend. We are here to offer emotional, psychological, informational and spiritual support free of charge. No one is turned away. It is a welcoming environment filled with happy faces, friendly smiles, love, support, and encouragement. When you come through these doors, you're looking for something. You're looking for support. You're looking for quality of life, improvement of quality of it's life. It's going to be an overwhelming diagnosis, and it, it, it brings up huge issues, uh, emotional issues, psychological issues, uh, social issues. Um, and although someone's going through treatment quite successfully in our clinic, we can only do so much in the clinic setting. We're seeing, we're seeing people on a, a schedule, uh, week by week. Uh, there's so much that has to be done in between, and that's where the support services are, 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 are so important and so useful. The public system can do a lot, but only so much. You know, there's a lot of need beyond that that the privately funded and charitable service organizations can provide. I have noticed a difference uh, when patients have gone to Wellspring during their treatment uh, in, in how they're able to cope with things. All cancers have a common thread of some things that are hard to deal with and Wellspring gives you the ability to talk about those things in a very comfortable relaxed atmosphere non-medical there's nobody telling you what to do or when not to do it it's just friendship you walk in the door and it's just very comfortable you don't feel the least bit intimidated if you think you need help and you're the only one that will ever know that you need help then Wellspring is a place that you can go you can feel safe here, you can feel secure, you can feel free to, to share your feelings with, uh, without being embarrassed. Uh, 
I'm not saying that it won't be uncomfortable because it does take something for a man, I think, to a little more than it does for a woman to come out of his shell and talk about feelings. But, but I really, truly, deep down believe that it can benefit men. This is the place to let it out and uh, talk to others. Depending on your cancer, there's different men up here with different types of cancer. And they'll talk to you about your cancer. You're going to see someone that's healthy. And that's hope. Nothing but hope for that person. They're going to feel good. They really do. The facilitator uh, we have here at Wellspring uh, has been very good uh, at giving us all tools to help us move beyond the breast cancer. You have to learn how to live again. You have to learn how to think again and not be so afraid. We are a regional cancer support center and we're here for all residents of the Niagara region. I don't get paid here at Wellspring except in hugs and smiles. Um, and that's the most important part to me. Wellspring's a safe port in the storm of cancer. It's just the place you can come and talk and be with people and enjoy. My brother had passed away February 28, 1999. Uh, that's at that time, he had made me promise to continue with his dream and his plans to develop a cancer support center here in Niagara. We were able to open the center and begin programming in June of 2001. I know my brother Aldo would be so proud of what we're doing here at Wellspring. I'm grateful that he did see that there was a need and that he um, passed the torch to me to establish this organization. I wish he was here today to see it. Um, I wish he would have, could have benefited from it. But he lives on in, in uh, everyone that walks through these doors. And uh, I'm very proud of him. Thank you, Your Worship. And I, I, I thank Anne Mantini for, uh, for uh, providing the video to us, and I don't know, I feel a little shaken every time I watch uh, that video. There's a part of me that uh, wishes that I'd never had to use Wellspring's services, and yet there's a part of me that's forever grateful that Wellspring was here, that um, they provided counseling and support services to me uh, during my late wife's battle with cancer. and. It was because of that that I really uh, became committed to uh, Wellspring and to uh, supporting their efforts. Many people know that I'm a, uh, a peer support volunteer at their offices a few evenings a month. And um, a year ago, Council supported me in a, in a plan to set up an endowment fund that would provide perpetual um, contributions to Wellsprings for, for their uh, programs. Uh, and in terms of uh, their operating uh, uh, programs at, at the facility. As you heard from uh, Anne, it is a regional cancer uh, center serving residents of all of Niagara region. And certainly I want to make the residents of Niagara Falls aware that the facility, facility exists. As well, you heard from Dr. Hughes who said that the medical treatment that's provided by the oncology clinic can provide only so much and that they've observed that those who have uh, attended Wellspring and participated in their programs have actually had a very positive um, or a more positive uh, treatment because of their uh, support that they received from Wellspring. So it really is an important uh, community foundation. <coughs> the, um, so a year ago, Council supported me in my, uh, my quest to set up a, an endowment fund and with that, we went out to the community seeking pledges to uh, fund my running, to, uh, to raise money. Our goal was to raise $10,000 over a three-year period. And I'm happy to report that we raised $13,000 last year alone. And we're able to... <laughs> the, uh, and uh, so I want to thank publicly all of those who uh, contributed because it really made a difference. And, and that's uh, our purpose tonight. It's, t it's time to give back to the community that gave so generously. Uh, but I also want to say that uh, I have a goal this year of running as well. Um, I'm running 12 races, one a month, 
I've never done that before. Uh, my maximum has only ever been eight. Uh, in the last few years, it's one or two races. Those races are anywhere from five kilometers to, uh, I'm hoping to do a full, full uh, marathon. For those who uh, know about my uh, quest to conquer uh, all, five, or all seven continents uh, and run a marathon on every continent, um, my next uh, quest is uh, Marrakesh, Morocco for Northern Africa and uh, so that's uh, several months away so I have uh, training to do in between uh, but certainly um, I've run three, mar uh, three uh, races so far this year. I'm going to do Run for the Hills in Short Hills Provincial Park later this month. It's a 10 kilometer race, uh, half marathon in Grand Island uh, in May. So those are among my uh, most immediate goals. And our goal is, of course, to, uh, to build the fund. Um, for those who have ever seen my license plate, uh, it says, loves to run. That's primarily what I, why I'm running, using something that I enjoy to, uh, to give back. The second thing is because of Wellspring, and you saw the video and uh, the important work it does. And the third thing is, as plan director, I know that communities are more than just buildings and subdivisions. It's the support services out there. It's the people who give back, contribute to the community that really make our city a success. And so it's important that we be able to provide these facilities uh, in, our, in our city. And um, so I'm pleased to have uh, uh, Liz Palmieri with me today from the uh, Niagara Community uh, Foundation and she's going to present a check to Wellspring and I uh, wonder if uh, we could come up front and, uh, and do that. Sure. Could I ask Anne and uh, Liz to come forward, please, to join us? I want to welcome uh, Liz uh, to this meeting as well. And, uh, She's making a presentation. And why don't you come on this side? You're going to get the computer chip in. So, so I'll turn it over to, uh, to Liz. So as um, Alex said, it's an endowment fund, and it's the earnings on the endowment fund that will be paid perpetually to Wellspring. And so this is the first payment of $500, and that's towards programs that the, uh, are taking place, and you saw some of them certainly at, uh, in the video. And we're really pleased. What Alex has done is really quite unique. Um, and there's actually going to be something else announced in a couple of months about another Niagara Falls unique way of raising funds for endowment, which is very involved in the community. So we're really happy to be able to be working with Alex and with Wellspring. That's great. Well, thank you so much. I want to say just, uh, first of all, thank you to Alex for his efforts in doing and creating this fund for us, for Wellspring, uh, through the Niagara Community Foundation. This money does go a long way. As a charitable organization, we rely 100% on the community we serve. We don't receive any government funding, and we're not supported by any other cancer-related charity. We are solely supported by you, the community, and uh, Alex certainly is, is, is you know, leading the way in, in helping us raise the funds that we need so desperately. Since opening our doors in June of 2001, we've registered now over 25,000 program attendances from men, women, and children who are living with cancer. In the month of March alone, we registered over 45 new individuals who were diagnosed with cancer. And we know that's a small percentage of people that have been diagnosed in our region. So we, we see the growth. It's happening, and, and uh, unfortunately, the need is there. But we're committed, committed to, to helping those who are living or diagnosed with this disease or a loved one who's been diagnosed and helping them through their journey and hopefully make it a little easier for them. And, uh, and that's what we're here to do. So thank you so much, Alex, and, and thank you, Mary Salsi. Can I just say one last thing? Um, as well, I want to, uh, to match the, uh, the uh, grant that's here, and I have a check, a personal check, that I want to give to and this evening as well uh, to go along with, uh, Aww, with us. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just wanted to say, if I may, on behalf of members of council, uh, you uh, are directing an organization that makes uh, 
the quality of life a, a lot easier for those people who have challenges, especially with health care. We do appreciate your efforts on behalf of all those in the region. On behalf of members of council, I want to thank you for the good work that Wellspring is doing. We do support it, as you know, and we're pleased to do so. And, Alex, we're appreciative of the fact that you're leading the way literally. And, uh, Liz, thank you for the work you do with the foundation. So on behalf of all the residents and members of council, I'd like to say thank you very much. We do have comments from members of council. Councilor Fisher. Thank you. On your video, I saw Sue Bernier. Sue and a small group of women, such as her mom, are called the Happy Hookers. Yes, they are. The Happy Hookers make necklaces. Thank you very much. You wore one. In many, many colors. Every necklace is different. And how much have they raised? Now over $200,000. Thank you. $5 a necklace. And you'll see them everywhere. The necklaces can be found just about in every store. Falls Manor, and I don't know where else, and you can always contact Sue Bernier, and she's got them in all colors. And her goal was to raise $500. That's right. And it's now, I would say it's international. The necklaces of hope are international yes. now. And, and the women love to be called the happy hookers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank Appreciate you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Members of Council, our next deputation is uh, the 2010 uh, Power Pledge, and this evening we have from Niagara Peninsula Energy, Ms. Sue Forche, who's going to outline to Council uh, Niagara Peninsula Energy's various conservation programs and the 2010 uh, Power Pledge initiative. So welcome. Welcome. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am pleased to be here this evening on behalf of our Niagara Peninsula Energy Board of Directors, Councillor Wayne Thompson and Councillor Ian Oney. Um, the Ontario Power Authority is the arm of the Ministry of Energy, and its, its main mandate is to promote conservation throughout Ontario. So they have put a challenge out to our city and our residents, a challenge to take the pledge, and one I am sure our city is willing to take on. The campaign objective is a province-wide high-profile energy conservation awareness campaign that engages Ontarians to take simple conservation actions that will have lasting financial rewards and help fight climate change. Phantom Power. Research shows Ontarians are looking for simple high-value conservation actions. The next step to CFLs, the light bulbs. These are just some of the power bars that are available right now. This is a power bar that is, has a sensor timer in it, so you can automatically turn it off. And phantom power is um, DVDs, Xboxes, cell phones, all the things that you forget are plugged in, but the electricity is still ticking. What these types of power bars do is sense the phantom power and bring it down. So your constant ones are still plugged in, but the other um, electronics will power down automatically. So we want to bring that awareness to the residents. Phantom power that's wasted by electronic devices and appliances that use power even when they are turned off. Most Ontarians are not aware that many electric devices draw energy even when they have been turned off. Estimates phantom power represents as much as 15% of a household's annual electricity <coughs> use. Power bars with timers and auto shutoffs is, such as this one or the power strip bar, which are available in department stores, are some effective ways to fight phantom power. The Power Pledge campaign will ra raise awareness and motivate Ontarians to take action and reduce the phantom power. Some of the campaign participants is the World um, WWF Canada, Loyalty One Air Miles, and of course, Niagara Peninsula Energy Inc., municipalities throughout Ontario, and some chambers of commerce. The core concept is an online pledge including six simple, meaningful and measurable conservation actions chosen to support the province-wide conservation program. Primary focus, using power bars to reduce phantom power. Additional pledges, if you're purchasing an Energy Star appliance, if you're doing a home energy audit, uh, refrigerator and freezer retirement program, which um, Niagara Peninsula Energy does, smarter laundry practices efficient use and care for home heating and cooling, such as air conditioning or programmable thermostats. 
And the target is 150,000 pledges. That's the target that the um, Ontario Power Authority is looking for. So they want to do a community challenge and a challenge day within our municipality. So they're building on the um, Energy Conservation Week that was um, last year, and I know at the AMO conference last year, I'm not sure what municipality won, but we didn't win, but we're gonna win this one. A four month grassroots campaign in support of the province-wide community challenge will be uh, from April 20th, Earth Week, to August 11th. The 2010 goal is 100 plus communities representing 80% of the population. And we're in a participation category of over 75,000 um, 75, uh, as a population. Winning communities announced and will be recognized at the AMO conference in Windsor. So beginning April 7th, participants can register on powerpledge.ca for the Power Pledge and Challenge Day campaign. Key milestone dates, well the launch has occurred, it's an online um, uh, registration. However, we will be having forms for people that are not on the internet and that can sign up. So that will be available as we are kicking off um, Earth Week, April 17th as a community challenge launch and have a barbecue and food drive at Sayers on Morrison Street, starting at 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. this Saturday, April 17th. We're gonna kick off Earth Week. August 11th will be Community Challenge Day, which more details will follow um, in the next couple of months. And the Power Pledge campaign ends August 31st. So we are hoping that we can get all residents signed up. It's just clicking on your on the uh, online form or you can register uh, through paper format also if you not, do not have the internet. And the one great thing is if you register and you are an Air Miles carrier, you receive 20 Air Miles points um, and also 10 of the points, can, 10 additional points go to a charity um, of WWF, Special Olympics Canada or Kids Help Phone. So 10 points will go towards a charity and 20 points if you're an Air Miles card carrier. Thank you, Sue. We have some questions from members of council and comments. Councillor Ioni. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Sue, for coming to the presentation. Um, what I'd like to see is the City of Niagara Falls partner with NPEI and join this uh, Power Pledge campaign. So I'd like to make uh, a couple motions. One, that we that City of Niagara Falls partners with NPEI to be uh, partners in the Pledge.ca campaign. Okay. Moved by Councillor Ioni, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Okay. Any comments? We've heard the motion. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To promote it, I'd also like to make a motion that we post it on the city website with a link to power.ca and a link to NPEI to learn the initiatives that are out there. Okay. Second the motion. Councillor Diodati, once again. we heard the comments or the, the question. Any, I'm going to call the question and say any further comments before I do that. Having said none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. I suppose I could have done this all in one motion. Yes, and I'd also like to register the city as a participant. So the city of Niagara Falls registers on, on power.ca so that we're a participant also. Okay, Mr. Clerk, can, can you accomplish that uh, for the city? For sure. Okay, moved by Councillor Anoni, once again, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Any further questions or comments by members of council? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. And I hope to see everyone out on Saturday, April 17th, to kick off Earth Week. And we'll have some nice earthly. Um, giveaways and um, help out our uh, local food bank. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for your presentation. Mr. Clerk, could you introduce the next item on the agenda, please? Your Worship, a public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city's official plan and zoning bylaw to permit a proposed, uh, a, a, an official plan policy to allow the passing of a holding zone uh, applicable to various properties located around the QEW and McLeod Road interchange. Notice was given by first class mail in accordance with the Planning Act on Friday, March 12, 2010, and by posting a sign in the area. 
anyone who wants notice of the passage of the uh, official plan and zoning bylaw amendment to participate in any site plan process that's not applicable here or preserve their opportunity to appeal to the Ontario Municipal Board shall leave their name on the sign-in sheets outside the council chamber. Thank you. This time I'm going to ask the Director of Planning to explain the purpose and the reason for the proposed uh, amendment and uh, bylaw, the uh, official plan amendment and bylaw amendment as well. Mr. Hillovich. Thank you, Worship. The lands in question, there are approximately 13 uh, parcels of land that are affected by the uh, area around the interchange of the QEW and McLeod Road. These are primarily commercial lands, many of which are already developed with a form of development, um, some of which are uh, still vacant. The lands in the surrounding area are also identified or developed with commercial uses. In addition, the lands also include a uh, portion of the property that's McBain Center, as well as the uh, Niagara Falls uh, hydro uh, property. The uh, official plan is on the screen in front of you. The dark red represents the major commercial land use. The cross-hatched red or lighter red uh, color as the our tourist commercial lands. The um, blue boundary around some of those parcels identify the areas that are affected by the amendment to the official plan, which introduces a holding provision into the official plan dealing with uh, the upgrading of the um, street system. A little bit of background. There is a significant amount of development anticipated in the near future around that interchange. The uh, various studies were being conducted by Niagara Region and identified that improvements needed are needed to accommodate the amount of additional traffic uh, that will be generated by these commercial developments. Uh, the commercial developments are all expected to uh, contribute financially to the, um, those improvements. Um, the owners, some of the owners, the ones that I I've outlined with the blue outline, uh, have not yet contributed, and so the developers who have actually already contributed have asked for this official plan amendment uh, and it will run for a 10-year period. The, um, we had a neighborhood um, open house meeting uh, in January of this year. Uh, two property owners were present. Uh, there were no objections received. The, um, because the uh, Queen Elizabeth Way is a uh, is the responsibility of the Ministry of Transportation. They have a land use uh, control over any development that goes on within 1,300 feet of that interchange, uh, and they are therefore uh, they provide a land use permit before any building permit can actually be uh, provided by the city. Uh, in order to uh, obtain some of the development that was going on in that area. It's estimated that there's $3.8 million worth of improvements uh, needed to, uh, to the bridge over the QEW as well as the on and off ramps and uh, the widening of McLeod Road. So uh, various uh, consortium of uh, commercial um, landowners got together. They provided uh, letters of credit for the $3.8 million to the region. They entered into a uh, cost-sharing agreement uh, with each other, with the city, with the region. It's currently being uh, finalized with the Ministry of Transportation. Uh, the agreement provides then a formula by which the other property owners uh, will be charged for their proportionate uh, share to that $3.8 million contribution. Uh, and in order to ensure that everyone pay pays their fair and equitable share, uh, official plan and zoning amendments are needed for holding provisions. The official plan um, currently has holding provisions in it. Uh, that official plan uh, provides for holding provisions to be used for the orderly development of the area, to phase development, uh, to provide servicing infrastructure. So certainly all of these areas are um, part and parcel of the interchange uh, improvements that have to go on. But we also want to add the additional uh, condition that the uh, landowners who have not yet contributed will be expected to contribute uh, towards that uh, interchange uh, uh, improvement uh, should they proceed within the next 10 years. The um, zoning of the subject lands are shopping center commercial, general commercial and tourist commercial. So an H symbol will be added to the front of all of those um, zones as it affects those 13 properties. 
the H symbol will be in effect for a 10-year period. Um, if the landowner um, uh, cho is, um, chooses to proceed with any of his development, he would then enter into the cost-sharing agreement and the H symbol will be lifted from his parcel of land so that he can proceed with the development. Uh, the H symbol doesn't interfere with any of the current uses of the land. For instance, you may, might have seen that um, um, Niagara Square is uh, an area that's uh, currently under, would be under this H symbol. So the mall is, is basically unaffected, but they do have uh, expansion potential and should they expand their shopping center beyond the development that you see that's currently going on, um, then they would, uh, would also uh, have to uh, contribute towards those uh, improvements. It doesn't affect the, uh, the lands that are yet to be developed uh, with the Canadian Tire at that uh, Niagara Square site. They've already contributed their share uh, through the existing cost-sharing agreement. Um, so therefore, the, um, there are a number of new commercial developments anticipated that we think will impact the QEW and McLeod Road interchange. The uh, improvements, um, the developers wish to proceed with the developments. They, uh, they've already entered into the cost-sharing agreement the holding symbol will be applied to those other lands that will benefit once the uh, improvements are done. And um, so this will ensure that they can, everybody contributes fairly and equitably. The recommendation, therefore, is that Council approve the official plan and zoning amendment applications and uh, the passing of a zoning ballot place a holding symbol for a period of 10 years or until the landowner enters into the agreement to contribute to the improvements to the QEW McLeod Road interchange. Those are the highlights. Thank you very much, Mr. Hillovich. And once again, members of the public are advised that to make an oral written submission at this public meeting will result in the Ontario Municipal Board uh, dismissing any referral that it receives. Failure to sign the sign-in sheets will result in staff rejecting an appeal as per Section 17, subsection 24 of the Planning Act. At this time, Council will hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak for the proposed uh, a, a, a proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment, and we'd like you to come forward to state your name and address if you would, please. So, anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak is welcome to do so at this point. Once again, anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak, please come forward. Okay. Any questions from members of council? Councillor Diodati? Yes, Your Worship. I had a question for um, Mr. Hurlovich regarding the letter that we received from McDonald's of Canada. Uh, Mr. Hillovich, through you, Mr. Chair, they asked some questions in regard to um, um, assumptions that contributions had already been made by smart centers, as well uh, questions about the uh, northwest side of the highway where that was not included. And I just wondered if we had some answers uh, to that letter. Uh, Mr. Hillovich? Uh, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, um, the agreement and the concern actually deals with uh, commercial and so answering your last question first, Councillor Diodati. The reason that the northwest corner um, of the QEW and McLeod was not affected is those lands are um, zoned and designated industrial uh, in the official plan. So those are the lands between uh, Kinsman Court and the QEW because they're not commercial, they don't generate the same kind of traffic volumes that uh, a shopping centre uh, would. So, uh, you know, you can imagine a new Walmart, you can imagine, uh, you don't have to imagine uh, the Niagara Square, the lands that are owned by uh, Villa Boy to the uh, west of the McBain Centre will also be developed as a shopping centre. So they generate significant vol traffic volumes. So that's why uh, those lands were not included. McDonald's did contribute um, towards um, some improvements uh, at the intersection uh, of uh, Oakwood and McLeod for their uh, existing uh, development and so those uh, funds will be uh, used or have been used for those uh, interse intersection uh, changes um, but should they expand or change their operations um, then they uh, would be subject to the um, holding agreement and contributing further. Um, the smart centers uh, south of there, I think you were asking about their uh, contribution. Um, they are paying their proportionate share for their uh, shopping center that's uh, being put in and in fact have, uh, are one of the parties that have um, basically front-ended 
the amount of money that would be needed for all the other properties. So hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir. For one other part. So if some of the other parts that are maybe industrial today, if later they choose to uh, uh, seek rezoning and they come into this commercial sector, would they then be asked to contribute as well? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, solicitor is going to ask this. I would anticipate that smart centers would be in here, uh, probably appearing to say that they would like the uh, council to consider the parties to do it. Most certainly not be here in this board, but the party wasn't in favor of the as far as it could be. The bill that anybody who saw the result of work didn't have to pass it. They would say, well, we're not anticipating anybody to be in the industrial lands that council, because they're so valuable to the use of the Councillor? Councillor Peter Angelo. Thanks, Your Worship. And a question through you to Mr. Herlovich. We're being asked to place an H symbol on these lands for a period of 10 years or until the owner of the lands and, and enter into an agreement to make contributions. And my question would be what happens if after 10 years they still didn't make any contributions or they didn't develop the land? Does, does the H symbol then disappear and then they're allowed to develop the land without contributing? Mr. Herlovich? I don't know whether our solicitor knows the, the terms from that yeah. agreement. Yes, that's right. They, they can develop uh, uh, Mr. Mayor's here. Um, the lands could be developed without uh, any further contribution. And that is, in fact, the agreement between the developers themselves. They are not looking for a contribution from a developer that develops outside the tender These particular developers have big concern as freeloaders on their work. They are concerned, particularly smart centers, because the, their tenants tend to attract business to the area. They are concerned about competitors piggybacking on their efforts. And they feel that after the 10 year period, further commercial development will not have actually been, they, they, there's confidence that that's not piggybacking on them. That's coming from another impetus other than the fact that they've established their development. That, that's what they find uh, kind of offensive when they contribute money to this, this interchange is that they're afraid that other people who are competing to, for sales from them will come in and benefit from the interchange specifically because their operation is attracting customers to the area. Uh, but they feel that after 10 years, that effect is not. Okay. Councillor? Okay. Uh, Councillor Janice Wing. My question was the same as Councillor Peter Angelos. Okay. All right, thank you. Are there any further questions from uh, the Council or persons present with respect to this proposed amendment? No further questions, and having seen none, then the official or the public meeting with respect to the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. In the pleasure of council. Moved by Councillor Ainoni, seconded by Councillor Wing, moving the recommendation. Any further questions or comments? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Mr. Clerk, could you introduce the next item on the agenda, please? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Your Worship, a public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed plan of vacant land condominium at 8891 and 8931 Forest View Boulevard. Notice was given by First Class Mail in accordance with the Planning Act on Friday, March 19, 2010, and by posting a sign on the property in question. Anyone who wants notice of Council's decision shall leave their name on the sign-in sheets outside the Council Chambers. And once again, I'm going to ask the Director of Planning to explain the purpose of this application, Mr. Hurlovich. The, uh, uh, Your Worship, this uh, application is for a vacant land uh, condominium at the, um, on the north side of Forest View Boulevard, uh, immediately east of Garner Road. Um, on the map in front of you, there's a, uh, a vacant um, parcel of land shown in white. That's a, a stormwater uh, uh, retention pond if you've uh, been there. And further to the um, west are the lands of the Niagara Falls Golf Club. The uh, lands to the north are the lands of the uh, um, Sundowner and uh, other commercial uses along Lundy's Lane. The uh, lands to the uh, west are part of uh, the Deerfield um, plan of subdivision. The lands in question involve two blocks of land um, to be used as a vacant land condominium. The uh, layout of the property is for 107 um, townhouse units that would be developed on a private road system with, um, with uh, 
general amenities and uh, common elements uh, to the condominium corporation. The applicant uh, or the lands uh, in question are 2.9 hectares, 7.2 uh, acres of land. As I mentioned, 107 planned townhouse units. The uh, plan of condominium is called a vacant land condominium. This is where uh, the owner individually owns the uh, land and the um, driveway on which the unit is located, uh, but the, con the landscaped areas and um, other elements are common to the corp uh, condominium corporation. The, um, the Planning Act requires that there be a public meeting, and that's uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting. The recommendations are that uh, the vacant land um, condominium be draft approved subject to conditions that are included in Appendix 1 of uh, this report, uh, but basically all other elements have been addressed through the plan of subdivision which originally created these two blocks. Those are the highlights. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hurlwich. And once again, members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral or written submission at this public meeting could result in the Ontario Municipal Board dismissing any referral it receives if the party has not made an oral or written submission at this public meeting. At this time, Council will hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the draft plan of, of draft plan of vacant land condominium, and we'd like you to come forward and state your name and address, please, for the record. So anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak is welcome to come forward. Please come forward. Good evening, Your Worship. Um, your name and address, please. Um, Donna Bongers and John Bongers, 6104 right. Gardner Road. We are the square, the red square that's right beside the water management pond. Okay. Thank you. Um, the question that we have when we seen the original plans that um, there was no playground in the original plans. And our concern is, is that playground will be backed on to the fence of the water management pond. And we're concerned about hangout and young children may be trying to climb the fence to get into the pond if there's not any supervision that's there. So that is, is there anything else? Is that it? Um, the that. only other uh, question that we do have is along um, the tree line that's behind our house, they will be putting in a row of condominiums all the way down. Will there be a fence that goes in behind those condominiums that will also connect to the black fence that is adjacent to the pond? Certainly. Okay. Thank Got to answer those for you. What the time there is, Mr. Hurlwich, do you want to address that with respect to the site plan? I'm not sure that I have the directions uh, quite the... You want the location uh, of Mrs. Bonger's property? Yeah, so, Mrs. So, Bonger's, you care to just elaborate again for are you, are you Thank the, you very much. You see that little black square that right behind her in the road? Yes. That's our home. Okay. okay. And so immediately to your side is the stormwater pond. Correct. And there's a fence around the stormwater pond. Correct. Right now there's a black chain link five foot fence around that pond. Yes. And so that stormwater pond was established through the plan of subdivision has actually nothing to do with this plan of condominium and this and the fence was put up to keep people out of the pond okay i'm not uh, saying that people won't you know people will go into a department store and steal things but you know hopefully the majority of people don't i can understand the fence was put up for safety our question is the, will the condominium proposal will that be fenced in as well yes it will have a wood privacy fence Okay, and then now the question my wife was asking is, will that wooden fence tie into the chain link fence for the pond? I because believe the chain your, link fence is your, inside of the property line. And okay. normally there would be a berm at the rear, is that correct, uh, Mr. Hurlwich, with a fence uh, along the planted area? Yeah, I so don't know. So along the so top would be, there would be a berm? Yeah, I don't think there will be a berm in this particular case. It will just be a wood privacy okay. fence. Um, you want to just uh, yeah. along the side, that whole length? Uh, along that side. Oh, there, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. along now, there. Coming down the, the west side, Dean. Yeah, along. well, that fence. That's where the chain link fence is now. Right, will they tie in together? Or will it be complete? Will there be another fence in front of that chain link? I expect it would be a separate fence. Okay. 
your concern then would have been that someone inside of the townhouse development could climb over the five foot well, chain link it, fence. It, I know that it can happen anytime, yes. but I'm just saying with the playground there that it is more prone to happen. Right. That's my concern because I've seen kids jump that fence yes. and I've seen coyotes jump that fence. Right now they're playing, the kids are playing on because that, 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 that subdivision is growing. Yes. And there's children in there now. We can see them playing over there on that. They've made a pile of dirt with, I guess, topsoil mm -hmm. from when they developed all the homes there. And the kids are over there playing on there now. Yeah, we're just concerned that with the playground there, that there's more chance of them to jump in over the fence to get into the pond area. Yes. There is a requirement for a privacy fence. What that relationship is, whether they're cheek to jowl, I, I can't okay. say for sure. Can we find out when? Hopefully the applicant might be able to share that with us. Is that uh, okay? Is that possible? Sure. Okay. So we'll have that as a question to the applicant who should speak next. Okay. Is there anything that you've got your questions answered so far? Yeah, that's okay. good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. At this time, uh, council will hear the applicant uh, from the applicant or his representative. Good evening, uh, Your Worship, uh, honorable members of council and staff here this evening. Um, my name is Chris Miller. I'm a planner with Upper Canada Consultants uh, here in Niagara Region, and uh, I'm here on behalf of our clients, uh, Windlane uh, Development Inc. I would just like to take the opportunity, first of all, to say that we've read the recommendation report and we concur with, uh, with staff's uh, assessment and their recommendations. Uh, I was prepared to say that I have no other issues here, but obviously we've got uh, uh, something that was raised here this, this evening that I would like to address. Uh, the details on, on the cheek to jowl fencing that uh, Mr. Hurlovich has mentioned to, I'm not clear. There will be fencing and they will be coming together, um, you know, at the top northwest corner uh, where your property would be. So there will be the fencing that is there. Uh, I, I also would agree with Mr. Hurlovich in the fact that uh, kids jumping fences and things like that, supervision is, is what's required and uh, you know this, this kind of thing is not isolated. It would happen anywhere and you would hope that you know, parents are, are paying attention and things like that. So there's not really a heck of a lot I can do on that in that regard except you know, hope that parents are paying attention to, to their ch children and, and to, you know, there are a lot of eyes on the street. Certainly the development is, is uh, will provide for a lot of families and a lot of eyes in there. So you know, we hope that the community would take care of uh, uh, their children in the community. That's, uh, that's one of the aspects. So uh, to be able to tell you conclusively where those fences are right now, I don't think I can do that. We did go through a site plan process. We initiated the site plan process originally, and then it was converted to the, to the draft plan of Bacon Land Condominium process. And this will still require us to have the site plans approved by the municipality as conditions of, of uh, the Bacon Land Condominium. So uh, if there's any finite details in there, you know, that will be also uh, part of the later process. After the approval happens, uh, the conditions will be uh, cleared up. So, and we have to go through the remainder of the site plan process. So certainly we'll be able to pinpoint where the fencing would be. So basically, Council, that's, that's all I've had to Thank say. you. Are there any further questions of Mr. Miller? Councillor Thompson. Um, yeah, I, I don't think you responded to the uh, concerns that were uh, outlined. Are you going to have, uh, this is a condominium, new condominium development. Are you going to have a fence around the perimeter of the property? And is, is that not uh, normal, Mr. Uh, through the Chair, to Mr. Hurlovich, is that not normal to have a, a fence around the perimeter of the property? Uh, it is a requirement uh, of the municipality. Typically, as Mr. Miller said, um, we obtain that through the site plan uh, process when the plan develops. Yeah, well, I'm, I think you're saying that you would butt up against the uh, chain link fence. Is that what you were saying? Or you... uh, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, to the councillor. The, yes, the fencing would be around the perimeter of the site. Uh, I think that the confusion might be is, is there's a five link or five foot chain link fence there now. Yes. Would there be a wood fence, uh, a privacy fence, which is typically maybe six feet high, yeah. that would be right up against that? Yes. I'm not sure that that's what's happening here or not. And um, I think that's what part the question of, is. Part of that's, the, uh, what, okay. that's what they'd like to see happen. And if we have to make that decision now, then as a requirement, uh, I think that's uh, logical, and uh, I don't. Uh, I'd rather see a a board fence there, uh, consistent around the condominium development, 
I don't know why you'd want to do otherwise, but uh, I think that's what the people are looking for, more safety and to uh, confine people in the uh, condominium development. If you're going to do that, uh, I would certainly support the efforts of the individuals uh, suggesting that that's a logical way of doing it. And I would have thought, uh, I've lived in a few condominiums and uh, they've always been uh, completely fenced and uh, I would think that was appropriate. I don't think we should uh, uh, give you a choice. Uh, we want to approve it tonight or we'll uh, defer it until such time as you make up your mind. If I may, Mr. Mayor, through you, sure. I think part of the appeal of the units that would be along that side would be the, the amenity of the pond. So the pond itself would be a feature, a nice feature in their backyard. And if we go put up a fence, that amenity space is essentially well, 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 I'm, I'm glad you said that because that would change my mind about the development. Uh, if they're looking for a fence there, finishing it off, um, who wants to look at a, a stagnant pond? I wouldn't. So. I think you should fence it personally. Okay. Yes. Councillor Peter Angelo. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. And I think the bonger's concern was more in regards to the playground, not in the individual units. Mm -hmm. So I can appreciate what the gentleman is saying in the fact that, you know, he might not put up a fence in behind the actual units. But I think the bongers are worried about the playground. And I guess the question would be, are you going to put up a fence there? And perhaps, uh, councillors, so we could make that amendment to, uh, or make it a condition of the approval if you wish. Uh, to introduce that at the time we close the meeting. So, Mr. Miller, uh, if you can't speak on behalf of your client, then I think council will have to deal with that. Well, I mean, as far as, uh, through Mr. Mayor, uh, as far as a fence would go, if uh, fencing along the park space itself, um, if it has to be, you know, a board or perhaps just a higher chain link fence, if that's acceptable to the councillor uh, in as far as the children are concerned. It's not to me. Maybe you could ask the people. Right yes, I could just, I just want to hear from our solicitor for a second, Mr. Beeman. Just uh, in uh, past practice, I'm from uh, well, the law the rest is correct and breaker, but uh, certainly in the case of one of a prosecuted pool fence, we never accepted a chain link fence around the pool as being inadequate because of the small people can climb. The chain link fence is quite easy. Um, so if we're looking for uh, a safety factor, we would not recommend the chain link fence. Uh, um, because particularly in certain areas, the pool is Okay. Mr. Miller? Um, well, I, uh, I would ask that perhaps we consider dealing with this matter in the site plan process. This is so, still something that needs to go through the site plan process to be approved. So uh, the draft plan of condominium is, is essentially a, a one well, of tenure. I think you heard from council there's, there's a concern about that. We did have an expression from some of the neighbors. So if you can't uh, commit it, then the council may wish to uh, either um, defer your matter or deal with the matter and insert that as a condition of, uh, of the approval of site plan. Okay. So, so are you able to speak on behalf of your client? Uh, I would prefer that you defer the matter so we can work out details if that's acceptable. Okay. Councillor Thompson. Move a motion for deferral. Moved by Councillor Thompson. Well, actually, so, excuse me, just before we do that, if you don't mind, uh, the, the residents would like to speak. So, uh, sir, do you have anything to further add? Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, so Councillor uh, Thompson makes a motion to defer, seconded by uh, Councillor Maves. Uh, any further comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Two opposed, I presume. Uh, Mr. Hurlovich? Oh, yes, okay. I'm sorry, yes, I should I should technically close the meeting first, so if I don't mind, I will declare the meeting with respect to the proposed draft plan of vacant land condominium to be concluded, and then I'll entertain a motion with Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Mays. Once again, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, please raise your hands. And opposed? Two. Okay, motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you again. <clears throat> I have some comments to make uh, this evening, members of council. I'd like to begin with offering our, our sincere thanks to members of council, friends uh, throughout the community for your expressions of sympathy and condolences to the Canavan family and myself on the recent passing of my father-in-law, Mr. Cecil Canavan. On behalf of my wife and her family, we're very grateful for all the support that everyone showed to us. Uh, thank you all. I'd like to continue as well by highlighting some positive community notes that have taken place recently. Special congratulations to Margaritaville's uh, Canadian operations on their successful job fair here in Niagara Falls last week. Almost 300 uh, people were hired for a, a wide variety of uh, new positions. Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville is expected to open its doors here in Niagara Falls at the end of May. 
Congratulations as well to Donna Daglish and the team at Literacy at Niagara on their seventh annual Literacy Day this past weekend at the Bain Center. The event was a great success with hundreds of young people and families coming out to take part again this year. It's worth noting as well that the amazing works of art recently on display at the Niagara Falls Public Library. On Saturday, Mr. Floyd Fox held his first art exhibit at the age of 83 years, and uh, I congratulate him on his exceptional talent. City residents could view his creative drawings of planes, trains, and automobiles. The annual Stanford Center Volunteer Firefighters Association Easter Egg Hunt was an overwhelming success again this year. I want to thank uh, all those who are dedicated as volunteers at the Fireman's Park for hosting an exceptional community event that welcomed thousands of people for a fun-filled day. And I was pleased recently to join Felix Pingue, uh, Gino Gionardo to, pre to present a donation of more than $130,000 uh, to the orphaned and displaced children, the victims of the Abruzzi uh, earthquake in Italy. We uh, made the presentation in council chambers of the province of L'Aquila on behalf of the hundreds of local residents who do donated through the six area cultural clubs being Club Italian, Niagara Falls, the Italian Canadian clubs in Port Colborne and in Fort Erie, the, club, uh, the Capri Club in Thorold and Casa Dante in Welland and Club Castro Pignano in Port Robinson. Volunteers have been diligently working to collect donations since the devastating earthquake in Italy one year ago. We were pleased to see all the funds go directly to those families in need. As we look ahead to the coming weeks, I'd like to invite members of council and the community to attend the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee's annual Battle of the Bands. It's taking place this Thursday at the Optimus Hall at 7 p.m. Tickets are available through the Mayor's Office and also the McBain Center or at each of the uh, five high schools through committee members. The Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee also asks that residents and business owners to join with them as they celebrate Green Week, the week of April 19th to 23rd. At their schools uh, as well, they'll be cleaning up trash and conserving electricity all week. Our Park and the City Committee is proud to be involved and will once again be hosting Arbor Day as celebrations in our community. On Friday, April 23rd, volunteers will be planting trees on our Olympic Trail near City Hall, and we look forward to joining them there. This concludes my remarks this evening. Move on to communications and comments from the City Clerk. The uh, first uh, item is Coaches Association of Ontario requests that the week of April 17th to 26th uh, be uh, proclaimed as Ontario Coaches Week in the City of Niagara Falls. Moved by Councillor Cario, seconded by Councillor Maves. Any comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favour? The motion is carried. Thank you. Item number two, the Trillium Gift of Life Network requesting that the week of April 18th to 25th, 2010 be proclaimed as Organ and Tissue Donor Awareness Week in the City of Niagara Falls, also requesting a flag raising. Moved by Councillor Fisher, seconded by Councillor Thompson. Any further comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favour? Motion is carried. Thank you. Number three, the Niagara Region requests that the week of May 16th to 22nd, 2010 be recognized as National Public Works Week of the City of Niagara Falls for the Consideration Council. Moved by Councillor Cario, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Once again, Council has heard the motion. Any comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Number four, Niagara Region correspondence regarding the federal government's uh, New, New Horizon for Seniors program for the consideration, for actually Council's consideration. Motion to receive. Moved by Councillor Cario, seconded by Councillor Maves. Once again, you've heard the question. Any further comments? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Number five, Red Boss Poly Pyrotechnics uh, correspondence requesting fireworks display at Glenview Park for the Great Wolf Lodge visitors at various dates. Moved by Councillor Peter Angelo, seconded by Councillor Vic Cario. Once again, you've heard the motion. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Celebrate Old Town Town requests related, uh, various requests related to the annual festival. Uh, once again, uh, for the consideration of Council, moved by Councillor Diodati, seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo. Any further comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favour? Motion is carried. Additional items for Council's consideration. Mr. Clerk, we have two additional items, is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, the first one is uh, regarding uh, the process we've engaged to designate Highway 420. Uh, just due to uh, the signage that's proposed, we're uh, wanting Council to sign off or endorse just a switch from uh, Niagara Memorial Veterans Highway to Niagara Veterans Memorial Highway. The, uh, if you take a look at the sample signage that the MTO does, uh, we're thinking that it would be more appropriate to have the word veterans in more prominence than the word memorial but that's ultimately uh, we want council to sign off on that. Moved by Councillor Pedrangelo, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Any further comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? 
Motion is carried. Thank you. The second one is really just to follow up on an item f under new business from the last meeting regarding the uh, toll rates, and it's just outlining to council that the Bridge Commission does have a policy in place where they uh, monitor uh, the fluctuations in exchange on a quarterly basis and then try to uh, reflect those fluctuations uh, at the time. So uh, it would seem that they do have a policy in place that uh, takes a account of the fluctuations in exchange rates. Councillor Thompson. Just want to express my opinion that the policy is completely inadequate and uh, it uh, does not give fair and equitable opportunities to uh, the Canadian visitors compared to the U.S. visitors. And uh, uh, personally, I'd like to express my opinion that uh, the policy is, uh, the, the Parks Commission is able to adjust their rates on a daily basis with respect to the bank rate. I'm not suggesting that, but to suggest it can be, it can't be adjusted uh, more fairly and equitably than they've laid out in the policy is total, totally uh, ludicrous, and I disagree with it. But uh, uh, who are you going to fight? Thank you. Thank you. So, motion to receive. Moved by Councillor Wing, second by Councillor Inouye. Any further comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Move on to reports. Uh, CAO report uh, filling vacancies on the Municipal Heritage Committee. Uh, Mr. Clerk, do you want to address this? I'm sorry, Councillor Wing. Sure. I will move the uh, Municipal Heritage Committee recommendations. Uh, Laurel Burke. I'm sorry, Laurel Campbell and Gary Burke. Second. Moved by uh, Councillor Wing, seconded by Councillor Iannone. Refer the two applicants. Uh, any further questions or comments? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. And ask for ratification of Corporate Services Committee. Call on Councillor Peter Angelo's chair. Thank you, Your Worship. Following items have been ratified from tonight's meeting of the Community Services Committee. First, under reports dealing with the water and sewer volumetric rates, it was recommended that Council approve the 2010 water and sewer volumetric rates and fixed service charges and all other rates and fees as outlined in Appendix A. Secondly, the Council approved staff's participation with regional staff and staff members of other local municipalities to review the methodology for establishing water and wastewater rates for 2011 and beyond. And thirdly, the Council directs staff to review the billing process, including the relationship with Niagara Peninsula Energy, Inc., and to develop an alternate account structure for Council's consideration once the regional review is completed. Second report, Your Worship, dealt with the Winter Festival of Lights line of credit. It was recommended that Council approve the guarantee for the Winter Festival of Lights for $400,000, subject to staff being satisfied with the Winter Festival of Lights financials, as well that the City's credit guarantee only be utilized after the Winter Festival of Lights $100,000 line of credit has been fully utilized. Thirdly, that an annual, review, an annual review of the Winter Festival of Lights financial situation take place prior to Council's approval of future grants for the festival. Fourth, that the Winter Festival of Lights provide monthly financial statements of the City during the period of the time that the City is the credit guarantor. Fifth item, that the annual credit guarantee amount be reduced annually in keeping with the Winter Festival of Lights improved financial situation. And lastly, Your Worship, that the City pay down the debt $100,000 annually through a reduction in the Winter Festival of Lights grant commencing in 2011, and I would so move the minutes. Moved by Councillor Pierangelo, seconded by Councillor Thompson. Um, yeah, I'll second it, but I think uh, we had uh, one last uh, insertion there where we suggested that uh, the uh, financial staff review the uh, documents so, for the uh, Winter Festival of Lights prior to uh, the uh, final approval. Councillor Yeah, in item number one, Your Worship, I said that Council approved the credit guarantee for the Winter Festival of Lights for $400,000, subject to staff being satisfied yes. with the Winter Festival of Lights financials. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Already? You've heard that? All those in favor? Motion is carried. Councillor Ainley? Noted as opposed. Thank you. And uh, we'll call on the ratification for uh, community services, uh, uh, committee action, I should say. Call on Councillor Anoni as chair, please. Thank you. The following, <coughs> following items are to be ratified from tonight's meeting of the Community Services Committee. One approval of the March 22nd, 2010 Community Services Minutes. Under reports, MW 2010-11, Tender 210-15205, Whiteman Bridge Rehabilitation. 
Portage Road crossing the Welland River from Macklin Street to Bridgewater Street, one the contract be awarded to the lowest bidder, Rankin Construction Inc., at the tendered price of three million eight hundred forty-five thousand seven hundred sixty-six dollars and fifty cents, and that the mayor and the city clerk be authorized to execute the necessary contract documents, and that Ellis Engineering Inc. be awarded the assignment of part-time construction supervision and contract administration for this project in the amount of one hundred twenty-seven thousand three hundred eighty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Under MW 2010-15, the Chippewa Boat Dock, um, that was, the report was to be deferred. Under RC 2010-09, uh, per part concession agreement, that the license agreement between GNBA and the City of Niagara Falls to operate the concession May 1st to September 15th, 2010 at Kerr Park be approved, and that Council approve the bylaw listed later in the April 12th, 2010 agenda, authorizing the Mayor and the Clerk to execute the necessary agreement. Under RC 210 RNC 21008, RFP P09210, supply and delivery of over the counter beverages, vending, and related equipment. That the proposal from Coca Cola Canada for the supply and delivery of over the counter cold beverages, vending, and related equipment at the Gale Centre and Chippewa Willoughby Memorial Arena be approved. And that the Mayor and Clerk be authorized to execute the necessary contract documents. Under PD 21029, um, 4519 and 4525 Queen Street that the committee recommend to council the approval of commercial building and facade improvement grant for 4519 to 4525 Queen Street subject to the owner satisfying all the program requirements including all necessary permits and entering into an agreement with the city and that the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute the grant agreement under TS 21023 the false shuttle service amendment that council approve the proposed enhancement to the false shuttle service and I so move Moved by Councillor Ainoni, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Once again, you heard the question. Any comments? No comments. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you very much. Move on to the consent agenda. Pleasure of Council. Moved by Councillor Fisher, seconded by Councillor Peter Angel. Any further discussions? I see none. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, are there any additional? Um, uh, any additional bylaws or amendments to the bylaws to be noted for the council this evening? No, Your Worship. This time I'm going to ask for a motion to introduce the bylaws. Bylaws to be given a first reading. Moved by Councillor Peter Angelo, seconded by Councillor Piedadi. Uh, you've once again, Council, heard the motion. Any comments or questions? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Bylaws 2010-48 to 2010-54, right a first time. Thank you. Can I have a motion to give the bylaws a second and third reading? Moved by Councillor Peter Angelo, seconded by Councillor Diodati. Once again, Council has heard the motion. Any further questions or comments? Having seen none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Bylaws 2010-48 to 2010-54, right a second and third time and pass. Thank you. Any new business this evening? Uh, I have uh, Councillor Wing, Councillor Diodati. Um, a few years ago, the city commissioned an animal control review, and that resulted in uh, what we call the Bandel Report. Uh, among its many recommendations was that physical improvements be made to the shelter operated by the Niagara Falls Humane Society, or alternately, that the city construct its own and uh, relationships uh, with the community with the community improved. And uh, now we have no question about uh, the city setting up its own operation instead. Um, we do have problems, though. Uh, at the meeting, Humane Society board meeting we had a couple weeks ago, we posted yet another deficit. We have struck a budget review committee to look under every rock we can find there for any possible cost savings that we can find. But I, and I think that is going to help, but it won't be enough. Uh, last year, uh, some Niagara Falls Humane Society representatives negotiated with city staff toward a new contract and we haven't, I understand the negotiations were finalized, everybody went away with an understanding, but the contract has not yet been prepared to be placed before council. One of the outcomes of those negotiations were a $25,000 increase in the contract funding to cover the increase in operating costs which came out of the, uh, the um, improved, physical improvements they made to the shelter. Uh, I chucked again today, I said, you know, was this 25000 above and beyond what we ended up doing as a forgivable mortgage for the improvements they made, which wiped out the, the, the reserves, and I was told that, yes, the 25000 was money that was earmarked by the city for a potential commitment to building a 
new facility, but uh, with us performing the renovations and improving our relationship, the money didn't require that earmarking anymore. So it was stated they would give this money to us to assist with our increase in operation fees. Now that 25000 was in our budget earlier this year. We took it out when we took out all new monies way back in our budget discussions. And uh, now I realize then, well, we're not putting any new monies in. We'll just have to see if we can keep going without it. However, since then, Council decided to give 50000 in new monies to the Greater Niagara General Foundation, which wasn't something that had been negotiated previously. This was just the result of Council being lobbied. So we said no to these 25000 that had been negotiated and yes to 50000 that hadn't. So that being the situation, um, we need to put the 25000 for the main study that was negotiated back in. You know, I could support no new monies because we were trying to accomplish something, but that went out the window. So that being the situation, we need to do this because the increase in operating fees was because of the improvements made as a result of the Bandel report. So my motion is we put that 25000 we removed earlier this year back in. Is there a second to the motion? Second it? Okay. Councillor Ianoni. Any further discussion? Is Councillor Peter Angelo. Yeah, I got a question, Your Worship. Where would the money come from? Good question. Uh, answer it. The same place that the 50000 for the GNGH <laughs> Foundation is coming from? Okay, Mr. Clerk. Uh, can you repeat the motion? Sorry, uh, the Council Secretary and I were talking about something Sorry, else it, and we missed that, the actual uh, motion. There was 25000 additional contract monies for the Niagara Falls Humane Society that was in our budget earlier this year. When we took out all new monies, we wiped that out along with everything else, like all the other requests. This wasn't really a request, it was something I understand that was negotiated, but we took it out and it needs to go back in. And Council Peter Angel was asking where it was from, so yes, Councilor Anoni. And I think it's important to note that when the Humane Society was here, the Council itself acknowledged that the reasons we were giving them additional monies, I think it was the loan of the grant that they came to us for, was because they actually implemented the improvements we told them to do. So they didn't they didn't go on their own and decide to lobby us and say we just need more money. We said your Bandale report came in, fix your facility, and they did. So their cost overruns were because we told them to do it, and yet we took out their twenty five thousand. So that's why I seconded it because I didn't I didn't consider it new money. I considered it money as a result of the direction we gave them. Our CAO uh, is not here this evening, as you know, but I'm going to ask Mr. Harrison if he can address it. I mean, there were some interim discussions that went on with the Humane Society, but uh, Mr. Harrison, are you able to uh, elaborate well, further? The, uh, the, maybe the clerk can elaborate more on the discussions with the uh, Humane Society, but the question as to where the money would come from, the, the budget is right now balanced. If you add an expenditure, then the natural implication would be that I'd have to raise the levy. So certainly... Um, or we could look and see if there's other areas that we could we could find the money. But certainly, at the last uh, board meeting, at the last council meeting, the, uh, the uh, budget was balanced. It didn't include the twenty-five thousand dollars. It did include the fifty thousand dollars for the General Hospital Foundation. So if you're adding an amendment to the budget, then we would take it from a, a minor adjustment to the levy. Thank you. Thank you. And the clerk and then council council. I had also, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but you'll recall we did do a report uh, in the fall just before you were starting into budget negotiations, and there were four recommendations in that report, of what I called the four-prong re report. And that came about through meetings with the Humane Society Board, trying to figure out ways to help them financially. And part of that included that additional 25 thousand dollars it included also a um, a grant for the spay and neutering uh, work mm -hmm. also the increase in the uh, licensing fees and, and there was a fourth one I mean like I said I don't have it in front of me but that's what council's decision was that is really what you've decided on I mean I think we're getting caught up in the term agreement there was an agreement by staff and the Humane Society at those meetings that we would bring forward that report for council to consider, which we did. And council, if you recall, uh, deferred that report and the decisions surrounding it, save and accept the fourth prong, which was the increase in the uh, licensing fees. 
You then had a subsequent report that came to council. The council did re approve. So I think it's probably makes sense for me to bring those reports forward to let you see what was actually agreed to. So there's some understanding. I mean, there is a discussion obviously with the Humane Society and us over the years to finalize an agreement, meaning the rules of engagement on what we expect from them. I see that as separate and apart from the financial issues which we were trying to work with them prior to that sort of formal agreement as far as what our expectations with them are. I mean, I think the bottom line has always been since the new board came in place we've had an excellent working relationship with them we are you know going forward I guess as far as continuing continuing to work with them so they should have no fear that that's you know uh, subject to us going elsewhere like it was a few years ago when we did actually do a request for proposal to see if there was maybe another provider out there for animal uh, control services. So basically we feel as staff going forward we've got a, a partnership with the Humane Society that uh, will probably be more formalized in the future with that agreement as far as the uh, what we're, our expectations of them are. But I mean as far as the financials, my opinion is the council already gave its decision on that based on those two reports. But what I'll do, like I said, was, is email you those reports so everybody understands exactly Exactly what was agreed to and if the board maybe has a request further to those two reports it's up to them to put something in writing to us. Okay, Councilor Thompson. Um, well I, I, I agree with uh, the comments of the clerk maybe we should have some reports back but uh, the uh, mystery of where we got the funds was uh, out of the uh, reserves that we had uh, accumulated uh, uh, from the uh, sale of the property on uh, McLeod Road, I believe, that's where we got the funds for the uh, hospital board, and uh, I think the 25 would be insignificant taking it out of that, but I think it's uh, prudent to uh, look at uh, the reports because I remember uh, spending some time on that, and I, I think that uh, Mr. Todd coming in from uh, St. Catharines had a totally different perspective about uh, the Humane Society in uh, St. Catharines compared to what we do here. And I thought he was coming in with some thoughts and recommendations about uh, uh, some some uh, economies of scale. So uh, maybe we could have a full report plus the uh, previous reports brought back to council for consideration. And Councillor Thompson, I think I, if I'm correct, I think we took it from the interest portion of the proceeds from the sale of that land. So uh, members of council, we've heard now from the clerk, uh, Councillor Wing and Councillor Inoni, you have a motion on the table. Do you still wish to have that proceed or do you want to? Pardon? Okay, so we withdraw that? Yeah. Okay. You want to ask for a report to be submitted? To? Okay, moved by Councillor Wing. Seconded by Councillor Anona. And to add to that, maybe a, a, an official request from the Humane Society also, that your suggestion, Dean, was really good if they want more, have them actually put a request. Because I think they were of the understanding that that $25,000 was also coming. That's the understanding I get from talking. So if there's confusion, put a written request in and say, look, it, this is where our problem lies. We need the $25,000 to no. operate. I know our CAO had some dialogue with them, and as Councillor Thompson suggested, uh, he was talking about uh, other operations and comparing the two, and he we had, had the benefit of his information, his input, and uh, so I'm not sure if that had been finalized, but uh, I know that when the report comes back, I'm sure his, uh, his information will be included. Okay. We're going to forward the old reports. I'm not okay. sure what this new report is supposed to say. I mean, I think what it will do, yeah, we'll give the new report, or sorry, the old reports, and then from there, okay. uh, if the so Humane Society has a specific ask, they should put it in writing. Okay. Uh, I, you know, the, the, we've been dealing with um, Mr. DiPaolo, uh, Mr. DeLella, uh, to a lesser extent, Mr. Boone and Mr. Uh, DeRoche. They seem to understand exactly what council agreed to. Maybe the rest of the board maybe uh, wasn't as sure, but uh, you know, we, we've been uh, having dialogue with them all through this process and impressing upon them that although staff may make a recommendation, it's ultimately up to council whether they uh, approve that recommendation. So we're going to request those reports be forwarded to us at next council. Okay, members of council, is that clear then when you're voting on that? Any further comments? Having seen none, all those in favor? Thank you very much. And I'm sure that Mr. Uh, Mr. Todd will give his input at the time. If he could, he would be doing so today. 
Okay. I'm uh, calling on Councillor Diodati for new business. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Your Worship, real quickly, I um, read in the paper with great interest recently, uh, Mayor Martin brought forward a, um, a suggestion to the region. I'd like to make a motion supporting the idea of significantly reducing the size of regional government. Yes. I know we've done it many times before, but maybe it's timely since the recommendation is coming from within. I believe less, less is more, and reforming the governance structure is, uh, is long overdue. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councillor. I'll take that motion to start, uh, and uh, I'm going to ask, if you don't mind, before I ask for a second, I'm going to ask the clerk, he's waving his hand here. So, The reason why I say this, and I say this partly tongue-in-cheek, I know it's been uh, received uh, in the press is the Martin proposal, but you'll, if you go back to a council agenda in 2003, you'll discover it was actually the IRFIDA proposal. Uh, your council already made that proposal back in 2003. There was a committee in place at the time at the region where Mayor McMullen, Mayor McMullen now, he was a regional councillor at the time, uh, had a committee called Reshaping the Region. And at the time, our council then had a little subcommittee, which was Councillor uh, Janvery Poole. Uh, Mayor Thompson at the time, uh, Councillor Puttick, and there was a fourth. I'll have to look at the report. Norm didn't show up for the meeting, but that's not, it's neither here nor there. But the proposal, <laughs> but the proposal that we put forward to the region was exactly the same proposal, which is ni a 19-member regional council. So I'd like to think that great minds think alike. I'm not, uh, I'm not accusing uh, Mayor Martin of plagiarism, although I'm a little suspect that he came up with the exact same numbers that I did. But I'm sure for will send us a correspondence and we can support it and also uh, crow about the fact we were uh, seven years ahead of the game. Yeah. Well, worship, maybe, maybe the clerk could, um, uh, and the wordsmith that he is, could add to that motion that since the idea did get its genesis here, that we'd like to re-support the idea and hopefully this time we'll get a little bit of momentum and get it put through. So I'd that, make that motion, Your Worship. Okay, moved uh, by Councillor Diada, Diada, second by Councillor Pietrangelo. Let's get any further comments. Corey will have it. He wants 45 on there next week. Okay. Yes, Councillor Wing? Actually, I am leaning towards uh, uh, Corey's sentiments on the matter. I'm not sure that reducing the numbers is the way to go. When you have the small municipalities having one person only, uh, you know, I don't know. To me, it's just not as representative as it should be. So I'll vote against it. Okay. Councillor Annoni. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was the biggest opponent of us going from 12 to 8 didn't think it would work, had to eat my own words after that election. I think we worked quite succinctly with each other. Um, I, I kind of, I watch regional council and I now understand why people don't watch us. I mean, it, I, I have no understanding as to why there's so many there now as it is. So I, I'm fully in support of the motion and I think we did do it in 2003 and very interesting, I think the review wrote an editorial that said that's great pondering and you can stand up here and, and want to reduce it till hell freezes over but there's nobody around that table who's going to re vote to reduce to get their own job taken away. So we can send as many motions as we want but those people aren't going to vote for it. Councillor Thompson. Yeah, well, I, I never heard any taxpayers say they wanted to have more politicians. Uh, sitting around the table being paid uh, enough criticism there anyway. Uh, 31 people at the region, 32. Um, I think uh, if you look at uh, uh, Mississauga, which has about uh, seven or 800,000 population, I think they have the mayor and five councillors. Uh, it shows you what can be done. Um, 31 people. Uh, is totally uh, unruly and uh, unnecessary and uh, uh, we, we, we made changes here from 12 to 8. Uh, we also went from uh, uh, a ward system where everybody was looking at their own little fiefdom. Now we work as a municipality working together. Everybody in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the voters have the right to vote for everybody on council rather than two uh, members of council. And I haven't seen a motion come forward yet where anybody wanted to revert back. Okay. Alrighty, any further comments? All those in favor? Motion is carried. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Carrier, second by Councillor Mays. All those in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you very much, members of Council. <laughs>